and coming to depositional landforms the first important one is alluvial fan chakons which are mainly found uh, in the lesser himalayan or lower himalayan regions that is shivaliks shivaliks are mainly formed due to depositions which are accumulated uh, over a period of time due to rivers carrying huge amount of silt from the main rivers main mountains and these depositions get accumulated along these lines giving rise to a hilly and a, a silt and alluvium filled landform which is called alluvial fan estuaries are found where the mouth of the river is submerged in the sea this submergence happens mainly due to subsidence of river where the base of the river subsides or goes deep below giving rise to an estuary here fresh water and salt water get gets mixed hence they form an ideal site for fisheries as fresh water and salt water gets mixed we can see both kind of uh, marine animals both fresh water marine animals and salt water marine animals in this region hence they are ideal ground for fishing and due to varied diverse uh, animal life these regions are also biodiversity uh, biodiversity rich due to presence of various kinds of birds etc which are which come here during various seasons mainly migratory birds hence these places are important tourist destinations and also there are ideal sites for both construction of ports and industries as these sites are less affected by tides and waves they form ideal harbor locations hence and ports are built along estuaries and obviously when there are huge amount a uh, nice uh, port uh, infrastructure then the industries prosper in such regions as locomotion of uh, uh, transportation of various goods becomes easier and they become critical habitat habitat for species mainly due, uh, due to presence of various marine uh, animals which becomes feed to the birds and various other animals like crocodiles etc which are found in these kind of uh, estuaries the final one is cuspid delta during the formation of this delta the wave action or tidal action is very significant hence lot of silt is washed away into the sea and as most of the silt is washed away there are few number of distributaries like you can see there are only few distributaries and the course of the distributary seems to be very straight because of easy flow of water as uh, there is less accumulation of silt one good example is tiber river on the west coast of italy this kind of deltas are very rare in india so we have seen a uh, different stages of formation of river mainly youth stage mature stage and old stage uh, that is the landforms associated with the uh, fluvial action that is river action we saw that in youth stage there are v shaped valleys and there is uh, the speed of the river is very high hence it cuts deep gorges and very deep landforms in the mountainous regions the next stage is mat uh, maturity where the river enters a slightly plain uh, regions here the deposition becomes very significant and lot of silt is deposited in these regions and the next stage is old age where the meandering process process which is started in the mature stage of river ends in this stage and the formation of oxbow oxbow lakes and other associated landforms like deltas etc becomes significant and one of the important consequences of fluvial landforms is drainage pattern or drainage uh, systems where tributaries along with its main trunk river forms a system which is called as drainage system you can see in this figure that the area surrounded by this red line the area within this red line is an example for drainage basin where all the water which falls in this uh, basin is collected and funneled towards a single point which is called a sink the sink may be a inland lake or a river or or a sea so drainage basin is an area which funnels all the water into a sink and drainage system is a system of the tributaries and the trunk river as we can see this is the trunk river or the main river and all the other rivers are tributaries and all the water received by these tributaries collect are uh, collect, collected towards a single point which is called sink drainage basin is also called as catchment area drainage area river basin 
uh, water basin etc and the drainage basin of each single tributary is called as watershed for example multiple watersheds we can see in this figure like multiple watersheds of different tributaries together give rise to a, a complete drainage basin and the line or that narrow region which separates one drainage basin from another drainage basin is called as drainage divide we can see this thin red line is drainage divide which separates this drainage basin from the surrounding drainage basins and we have seen about what is a watershed watershed is an individual part of a drainage basin like each water a drainage basin of a simple single river gives uh, is called as a watershed for example this tributary as further has minor tributaries like this one so even this tributary has a drainage basin this also makes a watershed and many such watersheds give rise to a major uh, drainage basin and combination of such bigger drainage basin gives rise to a major, major drainage uh, basin and which forms a drainage system of uh, bigger rivers and the drainage system where the sink is an inland lake sea etc then such a drainage system is called as endoric drainage or inland drainage here the water doesn't flow into sea it ends up in a lake or an inland river for example few uh, rivers ends up in dead sea and various other uh, salty lakes such uh, drainage systems are called as inland drainage and drainage pattern is the arrangement of tributaries and the main trunk that is the angles that tributaries make with the main trunk while uh, during the convergence and the shape of these rivers all forms the part of drainage pattern and coming to different drainage patterns the first important one is discordant drainage pattern in this kind of drainage pattern the drainage pattern doesn't correlate to the topology and geology of the area topology and geology simply means the various various crustal features like uh, rock strata mountainous regions etc the river patterns doesn't depend on the topological features like the presence of hard and soft rocks uh, high and low range mountains etc and the first one in discordant drainage system drainage pattern is antecedent drainage or inconsequent drainage this drainage is found mainly in himalayan rivers where the rivers were born much before the mountains the mountains only started forming about 60 million years ago and these rivers were born much before this time period as a result as the raising raising of these mountains took place the vertical started uh, the river started cutting uh, the uplift, uplifted landforms vertically as a result the vertical erosion was significant and due to this vertical erosion the depth of the river started increasing and the river started creating huge gorges like indus at at the western side and the brahmaputra on the eastern side that is brahmaputra cuts a deep gorge near namche bava range and this kind of incision or cutting process mainly happens in in antecedent or inconsequent drainage and in this system the rivers are much older than com compared to the surrounding landforms as a result the landforms which are up uplifted are continuously cut and these rivers maintain their initial courses as we have seen even the upliftment even under the influence of upliftment the course of the river seem to be changed very uh, very uh, insignificantly that is the river seem to be uh, traverse the same path as they did a few million years ago before the formation of uh, himalayas hence they are they do not correlate to the topology and geology of the region and the other kind of example is superimposed drainage the same thing happens in superimposed drainage except that the rivers are formed after the landform has formed for example the northern peninsula rivers like chambal betwasan etc which are formed after the formation of peninsula rivers are example of superimposed drainage where the drainage pattern first forms with the cutting of uh, uh, upper softer strata and once all the upper softer strata is eroded it reaches a re uh, condition where the lower strata which is hard doesn't get eroded and the river uh, starts uh, flowing in the same course which it flowed uh, by cutting the softer strata and as the location or position of the river is superimposed on the harder strata it is called as superimposed drainage 
in this drainage system uh, the course of the river is not dependent on the surrounding strata for example if the river started flowing in certain direction by cutting softer strata and once it reaches harder strata even then the river starts flowing the same pattern instead of changing its course through other st softer strata this kind of change in course doesn't happen hence it is called as superimposed drainage where the river path is superimposed on the uh, harder strata the best example is upper peninsula rivers like chambal betwa etc so these are the upper peninsula rivers we can see this is chambal river and its tributaries and the rivers which are part of this region is called as upper tributa, uh, upper peninsula rivers and the other rivers which are for example of antecedent drainage are himalayan rivers which are formed mainly and flow through these regions and again the nature of flow varies when it they comes to plains this is plain regions so here the drainage pattern is different whereas in the upper himalayas and during uh, the flow they are flowing in himalayan regions their drainage pattern mainly follows antecedent kind of drainage that is antecedent kind of drainage and here we can, we see superimposed drainage and in plains it takes a different drainage system and the other important drainage systems are consequent uh, patterns where the rivers flow along the slope so here the drainage uh, the shape of the river mainly depends on the slope so whenever a river gets uh, easy flow it simply flows along the path hence it doesn't depend much on the layers that is strata soft or harder strata it simply follows the slope for example all the peninsula rivers like kaveri godavari krishna etc the important range is subsequent uh, subsequent uh, drainage pattern or subsequent rivers in this system they are most uh, closely related to superimposed drainage and the same rivers that is chambal uh, sind ken betwa etc which are upper peninsula rivers are example for this kind of drainage we have seen that the rocks uh, the river first starts cutting the upper strata forming a certain pattern and once the harder rocks are reached still the river seems to be flowing in the same pattern which it cut through softer strata and this is called as subsequent drainage because the river follows the subsequent path which was created after cutting of the softer strata the best example is chambal betwasan etc and depending on the shape of the rivers uh, formed and the way the rivers um, join the main trunk river the river system are further classified into dendritic patterns radial pattern rectangular pattern trellis pattern and annular angular parallel pattern and centripetal patterns so if we first see dendritic pattern here the rivers and its distributaries are arranged in the form of a branch of a tree example indus godavari mahanadi kaveri krishna etc and in the other kind where mainly we can see the radial pattern where the rivers emerge from the mountain peak or the glaciers in the mountains as glaciers melt all, all along the mountain uh, mountain uh, snow line the rivers flow in different directions across the slope of the mountain you can see there are huge uh, many number of mountains uh, rivers flowing all along this mountain slope this kind of pattern is called as radial pattern which is mainly observed in the regions of uh, himalayan mountains that is indus ganga etc during their initial courses uh, follow this kind of pattern and the other important pattern is rectangular pattern which is mainly found in vindhyan river systems that is rivers which have their source in the vindhyan mountain ranges these mountains flow rectangular paths that is they make steep turns at right angles and their tributaries also meet the main river at right angles and the next important drainage pattern is trellis in trellis the major trunk river flows follows its own own path that is by cutting through both so harder as well as softer rock stratum thus giving rise to the dissection in uh, ridges and fold mountains these kind of uh, drainage pattern is mostly found in old fold mountain system of appalachians and in india it's observed near the rivers in chotanagpur plateau and in this in this kind of drainage pattern the main the major minor and major tributaries join their respective bigger tributaries at 90 degrees and the trunk river has no uh, specific uh, curves at uh, certain angles they simply flow according to the rock stratum whereas Uh, the minor tributaries which are mostly affected by 
the kind of topography where they run through ridges and softer strata uh, their path is completely influenced by the presence of ridges as uh, as a result they flow along ridges and the smaller tributaries flows between the smaller ridges and they completely meet the river almost at 90 degrees and this uh, bigger tributaries also are influenced by these kind of ridges which are surrounded on both sides hence they cut a narrow valley or a wide valley between these two ridges whereas this, we can see the main trunk river irrespective of the ridges and other hard rock uh, hard rock strata they simply cut through all these rock strata and follow their course and the next one is annular pattern in which uh, rivers flowing from the peak of a mountain flows downwards for a certain uh, distance and then takes a curvy path or a circular path along the uh, peak of the mountain this is called annular uh, pattern it is found near uh rivers in nilgiri hills and some parts of uttarakhand etc and the next one is angular pattern in which the rivers meet the main trunk at right angles or uh, sorry acute angles that is angle less than 90 degree hence it is called as angular pattern you can see this kind of pattern in shivaliks that is foothills of himalayas and the next one is parallel where rivers flow for uh, parallelly for a long distance and then meet the main trunks at uh, acute angles for example the rivers like yamuna ganga which uh, flow for in parallelly like in the north indian plains and reach at certain point at acute angles this kind of drainage pattern is called parallel drainage pattern and the next one is sentry petal this kind of pattern is mostly observed in the tibetan region and ladakh and other uh, plateau regions this is because the rivers flowing from different islands meet at the same point and from there they be, they make a single course and move as a major river